friends, are you ready for four quick and easy one pan meals? Well, I have got four of our favorite one pan meals to show you this week. Quick, simple, easy, one pan, cleanup is quick and simple too with only one pan. So, if this is your first time joining in, my name's Susan and welcome. If you see something you like, give it a thumbs up. You can always share it with someone. That way you both can make those amazing recipes. So come on, let's get to making some amazing one pan meals. Quick, simple, easy, and quick, simple, and easy cleanup to go with it. So come on, let's get to cooking. And we're gonna be making some Italian sausage and rice. I have got some olive oil, some hot Italian sausage. And mind you, I'm only going to use about three of these. I'll use the other two in something else. I've got some diced tomatoes that called for petite diced. Y'all know if y'all know my pantry, I don't have petite diced. I've got diced though, and they'll work just fine. I've got some Noor's creamy chicken rice. Parmesan cheese, this is what I've got. Some mozzarella and some minced garlic. So let's get to making some Italian sausage and rice. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on medium. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the casing off of, I don't know if you can see that, there's a casing on here. Take the casing off of the um, sausage, that way it can fry up without the casing. Now you can fry it up with the casing if you were gonna be cutting this into like slices and it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but they did not have the already uncased uh, spicy sausage. So I got what I could get. It does say to go ahead and add the two tablespoons of oil, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in, although I think the sausage is probably fatty enough, but it does call for a little bit of oil. I did forget something in the lineup earlier, and that is one onion diced. I'm gonna go ahead and let this start cooking. It does say to go ahead and add the minced garlic in. I wanna wait just a little bit because you can burn that garlic, but I wanna wait till this sausage gets sauteed down a little bit and the onion before I add the garlic in. I have removed the sausage and onion from the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and add two cups of water and the whole packet of Noor's creamy chicken. I'll go ahead and stir that in real quick. And it's got all of those good sausage juices in there, which are gonna make it awesome. I bring it up to a boil. Now I'm gonna turn it on low so it can simmer for about seven minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover it. I'll bring you back in seven minutes. And the rice is looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put back in the sausage and the onion. Now this is where I'm gonna add the garlic. I'm gonna add the one tablespoon of garlic right now because I didn't want it to burn earlier and I thought it possibly could have. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in right here. And nice and fragrant. I'm gonna go ahead and add the diced tomatoes. It does call for Italian diced petite tomatoes, and I don't have that. So I am gonna be adding in a little bit of Italian seasoning. Just to get a little bit more of that Italian flavor in here. Not that sausage had too much or very little, but you know. Now that I've stirred it up, I'm gonna go ahead and let this simmer for about two to three minutes. And then we will add some cheeses and it will be ready to eat. Now it is pretty much nicely cooked up. I know the, the uh, tomatoes are not as soft as I would have liked them, but that's okay. I'm gonna be adding in a half cup of mozzarella and a fourth cup a Parmesan and I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook up just a little bit let the rice absorb all the cheese 
put the lid back on it and let it just marinate in its goodness and then it'll be ready to serve. This is already looking really good and it is ready to plate. Let's go ahead and get Danny's portion in and then we'll get going. Okay, now this is something I think that Danny would probably love. We will see. Because he likes rice and he likes Italian sausage. It does have a little bit of other stuff in it. But it is mighty tasty. And here you go. Italian sausage and rice dinner. And let me give it a taste. that cheese bowl. It is so good. Y'all got to try it. And it's what's for supper tonight. And of course we're doing the beef and bean taco skillet today. I have done this recipe already in a video, but I'm going to do a quick run over of all the ingredients. A can of pinto beans, drained, not rinsed. A can of rotel, which you know I use the Mexican style. Some red cap adobo. I've got some Mexican blend cheese some onion and it calls for a half a sweet onion which is what I used and one pound of ground beef that I've already browned and drained so it's ready to roll so this is still going this is still hot I'm gonna go ahead and do two sprinkles of the adobo around the meat I am going to add the onions in. I am going to add the taco seasoning, which is one packet, which if you use the big container like I do with taco seasoning, then you need two tablespoons of taco seasoning. One, two. All right, two tablespoons. Now I'm gonna also add in the rotel. And the pinto beans that are drained, not rinsed. So they do have a little bit of uh, fluid in them, but not much. And now I'm going to mix this all together. And then I'm going to cover this up, and this is going to cook for about five minutes. So it makes a quick eat. Once you, once you brown the hamburger meat, you are good because this only takes about five minutes. I'm going to cover it up, put it on a medium low, and it will create some juices. But make sure everything is nicely stirred in. And I'll come back whenever it's ready to put on the tacos. I mean, it's on medium, and you see how much juice it has made. It has made a lot of juice. So this is ready to go in a taco. You can add a little more adobo if you want to. I think it's probably good as is because y'all know we're going to spice it up. Let's get it on the tacos. That's a little bit too much, I think. And now you know we like the hot, spicy. Take a taco sauce. Okay, I'm gonna do some daisy sour cream, which I'm about out. I'm gonna go get me another squeezable. And I actually found a thing of Mexican blend cheese that was already defrosted, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that up. All right, and there's Danny's tacos. Y'all know the drill. Let me get me a bowl and make me some taco nachos. A little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of taco sauce. A little bit of sour cream on my taco nachos. All right, and make some cheese. Now, 
that's what I call supper Tuesday night and it is good and tonight of course we're gonna be making the borzon chicken uh, what you'll need is some olive oil some borzon cheese if you've never had this this stuff is awesome by itself but on chicken even better a little bit of garlic powder salt and pepper some butter this is chicken bouillon about three fourth cup and I've got some onions chopped up along with chicken tenderloin and I'm also going to make some creamy garlic shells on the side to go with this so let's get started on the borzon chicken I've got the heat on medium right now I'm gonna go ahead and put one tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan And then I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken breast, well, chicken tenders that is. I've got four that I'm going to go ahead and put into the pan. It says to use two, two, chicken, two large chicken breasts and cut them in half. I just had chicken tenders, so I'm going to put four of the chicken tenders in there. And it says to salt and pepper well. and put a little bit of garlic powder on them. All right, now I've just gotta let the pan come up to heat so I can get these cooked. I'll bring you back whenever they get a little bit done. And I've been cooking these for a few minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and take them off or out of the pan. And I'm going to go ahead and put the onion in. It calls for half a medium onion. It's about what I've got in here. I just empty it all out. And go ahead and let the onion saute. That'll help get all the good burnt on areas down here. Off the pan. I'm going to go ahead and cover this while these saute for just a few minutes. So the onions have turned a little bit, not opaque, but a little bit golden. I'm going to go ahead and add in the chicken broth, the 3 4 cup of chicken broth, to the pan. I'm going to let that bubble for just a minute, and then I'm going to add the borzon cheese. So it's starting to boil just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in the borzon cheese, and I'm going to try to cut it up into some pieces. It's a crumblier cheese anyway especially when it's cold so it kind of crumbles as you can see I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the pan try to get all that goodness in here because that borzon is my favorite cheese to eat on crackers I'll tell you that much so whenever I came across this recipe borzon chicken I was like perfect two of my favorite things to eat put together so I'm going to go ahead and stir this around to create mm, a nice broth for the chicken. And it's getting there. It ain't going to take it long. So let me put this on low, let this simmer for just a little bit, and I'll bring you back whenever we add the chicken. Now the mixture is starting to boil. I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken back in. Put it in there, flip it over. Because this is good stuff right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes, and it is ready to cook. I'll bring you back whenever I plate it. Let's go ahead and plate this up. Danny's not home, so I'm gonna plate it up. He's still at the gym. Lord love y'all, you know, he likes the gym. Let me get some mac and cheese on here. I'm going to go ahead and put some bread on the plate. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the juice from the chicken on the chicken and the bread. I mean, I know this is going to be amazing because I know what borzon tastes like. 
a little bit on the chicken. And it's time to eat. First thing I'm going to try is the chicken. I knew this was going to be good because of the bourgeon, but we'll try the chicken. Mm. That is so good. I wish I had made some mashed potatoes or something. That's why I use the bread. I figure the bread would be a good thing to sop up all this goodness. Because it is like the best gravy that there ever was. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's it. That is the bomb. Y'all have got to make this. Quick, easy, simple, weeknight meal. That taste, gourmet, and amazing. You gotta try it. I'll put the recipe down below. And let's get going on some Cajun Dirty Orzo. I've got some Cajun seasoning. I'm going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that to make it the way I like it. Because y'all know I love slap, slap your mama. But I want to put a little bit of the Zatarans in with it. So I'm going to mix the two. Got some garlic powder, some tomato paste, some garlic, minced garlic that is. Some Orzo pasta. I've got a little parsley, some olive oil. Three and a half cups of beef broth, a little butter, a little onion, and two bell peppers I'm going to cut up. And of course, some hamburger meat that I'm grounding up in the pan as we speak. So let's get going on getting this Cajun Dirty Orzo cooked up. And I have already browned up the beef in here. I've already removed it. I'm going to go ahead and add the tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and add in the peppers and onions. I'm going to do the onion, the peppers first because they take a little bit longer to cook. And I've got this over about a good medium high heat. I'm going to go ahead and let this soften up. And I have let these bell peppers simmer down just a little bit. They are now a little bit juicier. I'm going to go ahead and add in the onion. Okay, this is sweating down really good. I'm going to go ahead and stir in the minced garlic and all the seasonings that I've got, which is the Creole seasoning, the garlic powder, the parsley. Let me go ahead and stir this around just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add back in the um, beef, ground beef that I have, and I'm also going to add in the orzo so it can brown up just a little bit. You want it to get to the bottom of the pan so it can get a little brown texture on it, which is what I'm doing. Apparently you're supposed to put this in with it so it browns with it. I didn't read that far into the recipe, so I browned it beforehand, but it's all good. And let that sit for just a minute. And I've let that saute for about a minute or so. I'm going to go ahead and add in the beef broth. And the tomato paste. Alright. There we go. All that good flavor going on. A little bit of salt is going to go in next. Calls for about half a teaspoon. I'm just going to douse it in a little bit of salt. If I need to add some later, I always can. Now I'm going to let this cook on medium. Excuse me. I'm going to let this boil. So I'm going to put it on high real quick. And once it boils, then I'm going to turn it on simmer and let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. So let me go ahead and get this boiling. And then we'll turn it on simmer, and I'll bring you back whenever it's all done. Let this cook for about 15 minutes. And here is the Cajun Orzo. I did add a little sprinkle of Slap Your Mama on it because it wasn't spicy enough for me. But it tastes pretty good. Let's get it plated up. You could put it in a bowl. You could put it on a plate. You know Danny likes his 
on a plate. So that's what I'm doing. Give him a good little bit with a lot of meat in it. And there you go. Cajun orzo. And it's what's for supper tonight. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, press that button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. And let our family be a part of your family.